Is Walgreens below $20 a massive opportunity or an obvious trap with a dividend cut incoming? We can see it currently has a yield of just below 10%. And in today's episode, we are going to analyze the historical performance. We're going to jump into this company's income statement following their latest earnings report, looking at their total top line as well as their bottom line increase year on year. We want to see the health of this company, their total cash versus their total debt. And we want to compare them to some other companies in the consumer staples industry on a year to date basis versus that five years. And we will take a peek at what the institutions are doing, whether they are buying or selling this company. And we will talk about that dividend safety score running through some very important financial metrics that you need to understand before investing into Walgreens. And we will touch upon their latest earnings as well as running them through our stock valuation model getting to our intrinsic value and acceptable buy price given that investor margin of safety. Now it does currently offer a yield of 9.61% right there at the 52 week low sub $20 now and year to date this stock has been hammered down 46% over the last 10 years. If you were an investor, you would be down 63%. And this is a horrific graph, as we can see, just going downhill. It was nearly around $100 in 2015. And today's episode, we want to analyze, is this a company we should be looking to buy? Is it undervalued? Can we see the share price double or triple over the next few years, as well as see that yield grow into the mid digits, 12, 13, 14% yield on cost? Now, jumping straight into their income statement, what we like to see is around 3 to 7% growth year on year on the top line. 120 billion reported in August 2019. Latest annual report, in fact, very recent, 139. So, some nice increase over the last five years. We will touch upon the last 10 years percentage wise. But on a more granular level, what we do see some very small movements from 19 to 20 before a large increase to 21, relatively flat before another increase. Now, the positive sign is that it is moving in the right direction over the last five years. And now let's see what kind of story the bottom line tells us. Well, 4 billion reported in August 2019, 3 billion net loss in August 23. So we can already see whilst the top line has increased, that bottom line has in fact done a different direction and it has gone from 2019 down to 2020 before picking up to 2022 and then falling so slight inconsistencies on the top line and bottom line we do see some nice growth on the top line whereas on that bottom line we do see the net income fall to a net loss now what is the health of the company looking like on that total cash versus total debt well 1 billion of cash and short-term investments for walgreens in 2019 in their latest quarterly report, around 739 million. So they are holding on a little bit less cash than they did over the last five years. And comparing that numerically and directly to their total debt, well, it's gone from around 17 billion in 2019 to 34 and a half billion in their latest report. So whilst their cash hasn't moved too much, we do in fact see their total debt more than double over the last five years. And it will be important when we analyze that unsafe dividend to see how those dividend metrics are looking. Now, year to date versus some of their competitors, Walgreens are down 42%. It does include those dividends reinvested. And what we can see in actual fact, it is one of the worst performing. Now, if we extend that to over the last five years, looking at these competitors in peers of the industry, we do see an even worse performance from Walgreens, ticker symbol WBA down 70%. Now, it hasn't had the greatest last five years. In fact, when we looked at the last 10 years, it was downward trending. But as always, remember, past performance is never an indicator for the future. And it's just one of those research points that we do on the channel. Now, current institutional ownership sitting at around 58%. Now, 1.8 billion worth of shares have been sold over the last 12 months. But do note that slightly more at 2.4 billion have been bought over the same period so institutions over the whole are buying more than they are selling over the last 12 months and if we analyze q3 with green depicting inflows red outflows we can see in q3 in fact institutions sold more than they did buy whereas the opposite is true for the last four quarters before that with institutions buying more than they are selling now do remember that we never copy what the institutions do and we always do our own due diligence again this is just one piece of the puzzle for our analysis now, before we jump into the dividend safety and financial metrics, 
Let's take a very quick look at their earnings. So their latest earnings, we do see they did miss on the earnings per share by two cent, although they did in fact beat on the top line. 34.8 billion was expected. 35.42 was reported so a positive beat on the top line with the earnings per share however coming in slightly lower than expected similar story for may 2023 we do see the earnings per share coming in lower than expected however the top line a better performance than what wall street were counting on now when we take a look at q1 of 2023 they did in fact beat on both the earnings per share and top line so an interesting story and when we do compare q3 of 2023 versus q3 of 2022 we actually see some very positive data. They actually beat on all metrics when we compare 23Q3 of 22Q3. So very positive to see 9% up from last year, 56% up on the bottom line from last year, 56 again on the diluted earnings per share and some very strong growth on the net profit margin and operating income. So lots of positives when you do compare it to the prior year. But that main thing is that dividend safety, if you are locking in a yield of nearly 10%, you want to ensure that that yield is safe, or if it's not safe, at least be aware of that. So dividend safety score 30, unsafe score, market cap 17.3 billion, so it is a large cap company. Now for those that are keen that the recession is inbound, well last recession, they increased their dividend during the 0709 recession, plus 6% sales, remember that is above the average growth of companies in the S&P 500 who had negative growth. And they also did beat the S&P's negative 55, giving a negative 44% recession return. Now, dividend growth, they haven't increased the dividend for quite some time. Last three years, or in fact, last five years, 3% increase. Below that 4%, I advocate on the channel. And last 20 years, while it is positive to see that 13% double-digit increase, I'm not sure how relevant that is for Walgreens' current state and whether that is something we can really look as a target. Now, they have increased their dividends over the last 48 years, so they are two years away from being a dividend king. And when we take a look at dividend yield theory, well, it states a company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five-year average. So we have our first sign of undervaluation. And in fact, it is the highest the yield has been over the last five years. Forward PE significantly lower than the five-year average at six versus nine. And when we analyze the PE comparison, again, sitting at six versus the consumer staples of 19. Now, it is right there at that 52-week low, sub $20. But as always, please do bear in mind, a 52-week low is never a signal for undervaluation. Now, payout ratio is very important, as if this is too high, then it will look likely that that dividend will be cut. What we can see in actual fact here is that the earnings payout, as always, it is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting, so we ignore it. This is one reason I want to point out to you why this is the case 2023 1175% if you're looking at the earnings you will say you know it's below 60% it looks good there should be room to increase those dividends very nicely but no always focus on the free cash flow payout now 2014 to 2022 not too bad below the 60% for the large part of that period but 2023 what this is signaling is that they've paid a significant amount more in dividends than they've generated in free cash flow very, very worrying, a big red flag indicator. And 2023 is expected to be fairly high as well. So do bear that in mind when you are analyzing this company. Free cash flow per share, 292 in 2014, 16 cents in fact in 2023. It's very inconsistent as we can see. There is no real direction. It's not going up every single year or at least inconsistently up. So we do see that there has been some peaks and some troughs it does come up it does then come down but it isn't looking too good although 2024 is expected to go higher than that 16 cents we've seen this year sales growth interestingly it doesn't look that bad for this company that has been hammered three to seven percent is what i like to see yes there are some years of negative growth or very very marginal growth but over the whole it isn't the worst in terms of what we have analyzed so it is hard to correlate the sales growth to that top line or to in fact to that share price drop so numerically, what does this mean? Well, 76 billion in 2014, nearly double that in 2023. So yes, it is increasing. But I guess if you do look over the more recent time, that top line hasn't really moved. And you would like to see it at least in line with inflation. Otherwise, in real terms, the top line is decreasing. Shares outstanding, an interesting story here. Yes, they've done share issuances, diluting your position as a shareholder, but they've also done share buybacks. And if you do analyze 2014 to 2023, you do in fact see that this number has come down. So overall, they are returning excess cash to investor profits. 
But if you look at the last few years, it hasn't really moved too much. So a lot of analysts that you can do when looking at this data. ROIC, it is one of my metrics when I look to invest in a company, 10% or more. It gives me faith that management are able to effectively allocate their capital. And what we can see from 2020 to 2023, it's been very, very poor, well below 10%. In fact, from 2014 to 2019, it was fairly decent, fairly consistent, but this has dropped. So this is another area just to consider as a red flag potential, in my opinion. Free cash flow margin, operating margin. And yes, you could argue the consumer retails is very tough for companies. Margins do shrink. But what you can see from the trend, it was at 5%, which in my opinion is already low, and it is coming down. 2% in 2023 is extremely low. The reason for this is when that operating margin does shrink, it is very small. That bottom line net income will inevitably be even smaller. And therefore, for those who are looking for those dividend increases, it will be incredibly tough. So something to keep in mind. Free cash flow margin, again, a very similar story. 0% in 2023, and even the years before, well below that 6% we look for this industry. Now, we do see this net debt to EBITDA earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization, very key for that dividend safety. And what we can see here, this signals the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. So three is the maximum we like to see. Over the last 10 years, it has for the predominantly been above that. The last few years at around 33 and it is expected to go even higher. So this is a worry. They are taking on a significant amount of debt. So something just to bear in mind again and consider if you are looking to invest for the yield specifically. Now that is the analysis done. Let's jump into the valuation. And as always, if you're enjoying the content, value is being provided, smash that like button, hit the subscribe and bell so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. And finally, if you want to grab a copy of the valuation model to get to the intrinsic value and acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio, then do click on that pinned comment below. So let's jump in. Now, typically Graham's valuation is the first model that we use. However, for Walgreens, their trading 12 months earnings per share is negative. So this model isn't really accurate or relevant, but we typically put in the growth rate. As we can see, it is negative based on analyst estimates with that current yield on AAA corporate bonds. So we can see here the intrinsic value pretty mean minimal at $3. So it's not something we are using. Likewise, multiples valuation, what we normally do, companies in a similar sector and size, stock price, earnings per share, P multiple, and we get the average multiple out by the earnings per share of Walgreens. Again, we can't really use this as it is a negative EPS. So the first model we're using is the dividend discount model. Now we see the yearly dividends, average growth rate of 3.7%. Personally, I'm going for 0.75% for looking slightly higher than the current increase, but again, significantly lower than the preceding years. As always, if you grab a copy of the model below, you can play around with this. You can increase it. You can put it to zero depending on your own investment thesis. Now, with this estimate and judgments, it gives a DDM price of $27. As we can see, that is higher than the current trading price, but it is lower than the 52-week low, showing some signs of undervaluation based on this model, keeping in mind we're not looking at any model in isolation. The second and final model for Walgreens is the DCF model, discounted cash flow model with our free cash flow year on year. Average growth rate at 6.4%. Forward-looking analysts are estimating between 1% to 3%. With that discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by shares outstanding to get a DCF price of $29. Again, some nice upside to the current trading price around 40 to 50%. And we can see though that is still within the 52 week range, again, showing signs of undervaluation in the current market. Now, in terms of the intrinsic value for today's episode of Walgreens, it is just the average of the two models that we have just run through. And again, if you do enjoy the content value is being provided, do smash that like button, hit the subscribe and bell. It really helps the channel grow and pushes out this content to more investors and just lets me know you do enjoy this content, which I will continue to bring for you. Now, the current price just below $20. In fact, now the market is open, it is around $20. Margin of safety that we start off with is 10% if we believe it has a wide moat, strong financial metrics, good forward-looking data. So that would be a bar up to $25. Now, I know viewers on here would not be using a 10% margin of safety on Walgreens. At 20%, it would be a buy up to $22. And at 30%, around the current trading price now. So you are locking in between a 25 to 30% margin of safety based on our estimates and judgments. Now, what do Wall Street say? Well, they believe the share price to go up to around $27. So they do effectively see around 35 to 40% increase and upside to the current trading price. So what we are saying is you are locking in based on our estimates a 25 to 30% margin of safety with Wall Street's price around a 30 to 35% upside. 
Now, as always, do let me know your thoughts in the comments below, whether or not Walgreens is one that you have. You're looking to lock in for the yield, or maybe you've sold because you don't believe that dividend to be safe. Or maybe you are thinking that you are waiting for the dividend cut where investors will then sell. And similar to Intel that we saw earlier in the year where they did cut the dividend, the share price did rebound then quite significantly. And in my opinion, it is just a matter of time before Walgreens do effectively cut that dividend. And I am thinking to add this just a very small portion to the portfolio when the dividend does eventually get cut and the investors do look to sell. As I do believe this share price will rebound once that dividend is cut. So personally, I am waiting for a much lower price as I do believe there is some value for a quick turnaround. As always, though, do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you do enjoy the content, smash the like button, hit the subscribe and bell. And finally, if you do want to grab a copy of the valuation model to get to the intrinsic value of companies in your own portfolio and acceptable pie price, even in your wish list, and do click on that pinned comment. Finally, if you want to join us and jump in on the Discord talking all buyers and sellers in the stock market, do click on that Patreon link as well. As always, have a great day. Catch you on the next episode and take care.